Let's continue with our discussion of partially computable and computable functions. So, um, uh, we'll define um, partially computable functions uh, first. So, uh, g is a uh, partially computable function. Got an A. Uh, G is a partially computable function. If and only if there exists an L program. such that for all n tuples, so assuming that um, g has uh, uh, n arguments, so for all uh, possible uh, n tuples, the value of um, g of r1 through rn is the same as psi of p m r1 through rm. Uh, oops, I made it. Okay, let's correct it. m and m, because the number of arguments um, uh, must be the same. So, in other words, um, uh, P is a, an L program, and uh, its output, the value of um, uh, Y in the terminal snapshot, uh, which is Psi of Pi M R1 through RM, is going to be the same as the value of uh, uh, G. <clears throat> so, another uh, implication, though this is an implication of the definition. So uh, g of r1 through um, rm is defined if and only if psi of p m r1 through rm is defined. So <clears throat> what does that mean? Uh, so g, uh, the value of g on rm through rm, that m tuple is defined if and only if uh, program p terminates. And um, <clears throat> the y variable contains the same value, the value of g uh, on uh, those variables, r1 through rm, or values rather. Um, so let's consider an example. An example would be, let's take g to be <coughs> a function of two uh, arguments. And um, it is equal to x1 minus x2 if um, x1 is greater than or equal to um, x2. And it is it, uh, and it is undefined if x one is strictly less than x two. So this is a partially computable function. Now let's go on to computable functions. So why is it partially computable? Because we, we have defined the previous screencast the program that actually computes uh, g of x1 and x2. And so, um, and um, it is defined uh, whenever x1 is greater than or equal to x2. So when is, <coughs> excuse me, when is g a, um, a computable function? 
G is a computable function. If and only if Assuming that, okay, g of r1 through rn, it's assuming that it's a function of n arguments, is total. So that's the first requirement. And partially computable. So we have to um, show, to, to prove that uh, g is a computable function, we have to show that it is a total function and also that it is partially computable. In other words, we have to exhibit or construct a program or analytically argue that it is possible to construct such a program um, uh, in P, uh, sorry, in, uh, in L, program P in L, such that um, it computes G. So here's an example, X plus Y. It's a total function on natural numbers and um, uh, in the previous screencasts on uh, uh, the programming language L, we've actually um, constructed a program that computes x plus y. So it is total and partially computable. A couple of uh, terminological synonyms uh, that um, we should be aware of, because they're frequently used in the literature. The term partially computable is synonymous um, with the term partially recursive. And uh, the term computable uh, in the computability literature is synonymous with recursive. So um, let's consider a couple of functions. f of x is equal to x. When we've written uh, the programs, L programs for uh, each of those functions in the previous screencasts, you might want to. Uh, search and watch them if you want to familiarize yourself with um, those programs, how the programs uh, work in L. So f of x is equal x, identity f of x is equal x plus y, and f of x is equal x times y. And uh, f of x y is equal to x minus y. So all of these functions, all of them are partially computable on natural numbers. But only the first three are computable. Because not only can we exhibit a program uh, on natural numbers uh, for the first three, but we can also show that on n they're total. <laughs>